Hey everyone, you've made it to another Odette the Priest healing video. Today I just actually wanted to go over HealBot, how to set up HealBot, what it is, why healers use healing add-ons. Um, and then I've used HealBot for a long time, so I've kind of learned through trial and error how to make it more streamlined, more functional. And I just want to show you some of the tricks so that you can uh, be a better healer. I think it makes you a good healer. So yeah, healing add-ons like HealBot, um, basically just puts all the health bars from your party or your raid into just one add-on so that you can use mouse over macros, mouse over heals uh, to use abilities on those players really rapidly. That's the idea of it. And it's completely customizable. We're just going to go into sort of some function. Um, so this is the main menu. We'll just start at the top here. So if we go down first thing, I mean, the first couple things, we don't really care. If we go into spells, these are actually like the mouse over macros. So you're going to be using your mouse. And what we're looking at here is, you know, our left, middle, and right clicks. And then if we check this box, now we're talking about shift left click, shift middle click, shift right click, control, and alt. And you can like do a shift and control or whatever. So I play all the healers. And so I needed some sort of system so that I could easily switch from healer to healer. So for every healer, my left click is just the spell I use the most. So like Renew, Power and Shield, Rejuvenation, Holy Shock, Renewing Mist. I use that those a lot on every healer. And that's my left click. My right click is my fast single target spell. So like Flash Heal, Shadow Mend, Regrowth, Flash of Light. Uh, my middle click is usually an AOE spell. For whatever reason, my Holy Priest is just not. I don't know why. Somehow it's on, in my brain it works that it's on shift middle click. But typically middle click is just my AOE healing. And you can set it up however you want, whatever's easier for you. But if you play multiple healers, having some kind of system where you have similar spells on the same clicks is helpful, I think. The only thing I will tell you to do that's very important, I think, is putting any um, like defensive cooldowns that you have, like Pain Suppression or Life Cocoon or Hand of Sacrifice, put it on control. Put it on a control key bind, and that way you know, your pinky kind of has to move out of its way to go all the way down. And you're, so you're pressing control on purpose, and then you can use your button. And that way you'll never fat finger some like a big cooldown that you need. You'll never fat finger pain suppression um, if it's down on control. I would recommend getting used to that, putting your big cooldowns on control. So, but yeah, just whatever's comfortable for you, it'll work. Um, so the next few things, I wanted to talk about bars. So we don't really care about much of this. So if we go down, to headers first. So I don't play with headers, but you can turn headers on and then it tells you like group one, group two, group three, group four, but you can also do like make all sorts of different headers, like main tanks, healers, whatever. Um, for me, when I have like headers, uh, it just feels like I have to dodge dead space in my add-on when I'm just trying to click health bars. I have to like kind of dodge around headers. I, I don't like that. I, so I turn off headers and then it just short, you know, everything's kind of more compact and it's just health bars. I don't have to dodge. I'm not, I don't have any dead space. And kind of in the same vein is that um, if we go down to bars, the row spacer and column spacer. So you can put like spaces in between your health bars. No, turn all those down to zero. You don't want any dead space. You don't want to be like aiming your mouse, you know, it just slows you down, slows down your output. Just turn them all down to zero. This number of columns you can, so I, I keep it at one because I play a lot of five mans and it just puts all five people in a column. But if I were to hop into like a, a rated battleground or something, or just a battleground, all of a sudden like 40 people are going to be in a line down my screen. <laughs> so you can just fix that pretty easily just by changing the columns. So it'll break it down into, instead of one column of 40 people, I can do like four columns of 10 people or whatever. And then you can you can change like your bar height and width and stuff to whatever you like. I play five man, so yeah, this is kind of the size I like. If you're in a raid with 20 people, you probably want them a little smaller. It'll just take up your whole screen. So yeah, whatever's comfortable. This is important. So I came to this place for a reason because if I do this correctly, and I won't die, and then I can show you something. Okay, so my background bar, so we're in bars, background bar, I've turned my opacity all the way down to zero. 
because it's turned up, like what the hell's going on here, right? Like I don't know who's what health are you missing? Like what's going on here? I can kind of see some health, but just like visually, you don't know this guy's in trouble necessarily. Now you know he's in trouble. Now you know he's at 10% health and he's about to die. So turn your background bar. You can give it maybe a little bit of background or something if you want, but just to get it low, turn it pretty far down. And then out of range, turn that far down as well. So if they're more than 40 yards away from you in like a raid setting or something, it'll just gray out their bar a little bit. It, it won't have color. And so then you're not trying to like waste spells clicking on them. You just know they're out of range and hopefully someone else or you can try to run to them like a good healer, but just hope the Holy Paladin has them and, and you'll be fine. The other thing, okay, so incoming heals. So right here, if, when I'm casting this flash shield, you can see this like small bar coming. That also shows up for other healers in your raid. Like if, you're, if your druid's casting a regrowth on your tank, you'll be able to see it. You see like, oh, someone's casting a heal here. Maybe I don't need to use my serenity because this heal's coming. So that's important. And then having absorb. So my absorb, so absorb effect here, incoming heal, they're about the same. So now I can see how much absorb I have. So I have like a rapture cooldown and I get big absorbs. You can see how much absorbs is going on. That's, that's really important information, you know. So and that all comes just from turning this all the way down to zero, your background opacity. Turn that down to zero, and then it's just it's just so much better. And you can change the bar colors to whatever you want. Um, yeah, that's kind of up to you. I just wanted to show you those important things really fast. Um, if we go to now, the other really cool thing, now we're getting into like customizability with the add-on. So debuffs and buffs. You can track any debuff or any buff in the game using heal bot. A lot of them are already built in. Um, so if we're on debuffs right now, I turn on basically every like magic curse, poison disease. You know, I'm a priest in this case. I can't dispel curses. I can't dispel poisons, but I still want to know that there's a poison or a curse on a, on a friendly party member because I, maybe I need to heal a little more or something, right? So I turn all these on for sure. I think they come unchecked if you can't dispel them. So just make sure all these are checked all timed, just everything. Just you wanna know if there's a debuff on a party member, right? Um, so most of them are, through the add-on, already added, most debuffs. Uh, and they'll just show up, like here, here's a weakened soul debuff. So that's already in the game, I didn't have to add that. All your debuffs will show up right here. Now, some of them are not. And so what's super interesting is you can track things, like so I'm showing here Sanguine, like I've added Sanguine. You can tell who's standing Sanguine, you can track it. So I've added Sanguine, so, well, I guess we can just delete it and add it again, right? So let's delete Sanguine. Oh, okay. So now there's no Sanguine. So I would, I would drop down this Sanguine, or Sanguine, and then we just save it in here. And now I can change like priority one. I can even change the bar color if I want to whatever. Let's say like red or something. And now if anyone's staying in Sanguine, it's going to tell me and then it's going to turn on the bar red. So I can demonstrate this, I guess, with like Weakened Soul. So Weakened Soul, I'm tracking the debuff, but I'm not changing my bar color, but I can if I want. So if I click like change bar color, we can make it to whatever we want, maybe like blue or something. My bar will turn blue. If someone has Weakened Soul, my bar will turn blue. So this is like a visual cue. So I don't usually use blue bar colors for most stuff because you just become like immune to the color change. It doesn't, it loses its meaning. So I don't really, unless it's super important, I use, I use color change. And so one of them that is really important is Grievous Wounds. I keep a, a bar color, that's a weird color. I don't know why it's that, I usually use red. Okay, so now if anyone has a Grievous wound stack on them, it'll tell me they have a Grievous Wounds and the bar will turn red. So, and you can do that with any debuff, whether it's like, from a from an NPC or a bad guy or whatever, or from self-inflicted debuffs like forbearance is probably something important to track. Maybe like isothermia from a frost mage, or just mages in general, I guess, but mostly a frost mage because you want to know if, as soon as they can if if they can ice block again. So that's debuffs. Any debuff you can think of, you can just add in here. You can track whatever you want, change the bar color. You can also do the same thing with buffs. So you can see 
like offensive cooldowns in your group. You can see when combustion's on, so you can throw pa power infusion on your mage, for example, or whatever. You can see what cooldowns, so you can track like offensive cooldowns on all your DPS, so you know when bursting is happening. But mostly, what's you, at the bare minimum, what you need to be tracking are your tank cooldowns. So any, so you can go like it has all the classes in here. A lot of them are already added, just come standard. So if for warrior, for example, this is what it's tracking. I didn't have to add any of these; it just kind of came standard. But I can see like when last stands up, it tells me. And if I wanted to, I can track it with a bar color change. Whenever he has last, my tank has last stand, it'll tell me with a blue bar or a, a pink bar or whatever, you know? So you can do whatever you want there. Just knowing what cooldowns your tank is using is so important. So you don't like overlap pain suppression with survival instincts or something. You just want to know what cooldowns there. So you can rotate your cooldowns better, right? For example, like Frenzy Regen is a good one. You can see when they press Frenzy Regen, but it doesn't do the healing immediately. You know, it takes, it's like a hot. And so when you see him, you're thinking about using like Serenity, but oh, he just used Frenzy. Let me see how much healing this does before I waste my Serenity. And then most of the time, like Frenzy's OP, so it'll just top him off. But um, yeah, it just helps you make better decisions. It feels, it feels bad when you like slam a Serenity and then you realize he's got Frenzied up and now neither he doesn't have frenzy and you don't have serenity and there's big damage coming stuff like that is like in my opinion healers the healers fault like you should be able to play around what your tank's doing a little bit so that's buffs debuffs we've gone over bars spells there's one other thing i wanted to show you with spells you can throw in trinkets in here um so if you go like like here's basically anything you can put in here here's all the spells other spells items you can do macros, uh, whatever you want, you can put in here. The only like functional thing that I would recommend having a bind for is target. So like, so now my left click is target. So I'm not targeting anything. Now I can target people in my group, physically target them. Um, that becomes useful for that. That way you don't have to have a key bind in heal bot for every damn spell that you have basically. Right. So you can see I have like a bunch of spells just key bound or whatever, because I don't have everything in my heal bot. That would just be ridiculous. And so I have a target macro where I can target and then like use a spell on them. Like I don't have leap of faith in my heal bot. You can put leap of faith on a keybind somewhere and leap of faith will pull them. But for me, I just target leap of faith. I don't know why I do that, but that's just what I do. It's an option you can do. Um, yeah. I think that's everything that I wanted to text, wanted to say. So, um, oh no, it's not. I'm so glad I remembered. Okay, debuffs. What is really useful for like PvP? First of all, I wouldn't recommend using a healing add-on for arena. But if you're just getting into arena, yeah, you can. It, a healing add-on will help you if you're just getting in. If you're taking arena seriously, don't use a, a healing add-on. Um, but if you're just kind of learning the ropes, putting all the dispellable um, CC on like a red, um, let's think of one like frost trap. So if we do like frost trap from a hunter, for some reason you're a healer and they're not frost trapping you, but they're frost trapping your DPS. Um, you want to know that so you can dispel and maybe you're just kind of new and you're not, your awareness isn't great. You can just do a color change, just do a bar color change like, oh, red. A fluorescent red here so that when my dps is in a frost trap my bar just turns red and i can dispel it and use dispel you can do that with like polymorph uh, entangling roots uh, even me like sometimes i miss roots and get yelled at by my by my team <laughs> why aren't you dispelling my roots so yeah also on in that same vein if you like cyclone yeah i still have cyclone added and it's got a color change because it's so annoying when you don't realize because like, it can happen so fast and you don't know who that cyclone's going out on and you know this guy's low and the druid made a good play and he cycloned low but you didn't notice that and you just bombed a serenity into a cyclone that's a feels bad man so if you just do like a simple color change you can avoid situations like that you can tell i, I did that in the past <laughs> um yeah 
Um, I think that's everything. So that should make it a lot more functional. Basically, kill the dead space, get rid of group headers, get rid of like side space or space in between like rows and columns. Um, and then put your big cooldowns down on control and then track buffs and debuffs. So hopefully you should be able to know how to do all of that by now. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, but um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Let me know if that helps in your gameplay, if you enjoyed it. Um, please leave a like and subscribe and yeah, I'll be making more videos. So thank you for watching.